and we're rolling. Our mailbag has some girth to it this morning, buddy. Love to see it. <laughs> What's an uncomfortable way of putting it? Yeah, maybe it was an uncomfortable way of putting it, but there's a lot of interaction over the last week, and we're glad to see it. Of course, we're finally back up and running, and we might as well announce it off the top here, right? What? Let's let's just get it out there. You're like we didn't discuss this, Scott, but uh, <laughs> what are we discussing? Uh, we have been fundraising, I guess is the, the best way of putting it. Uh, we didn't start it out that way, but all of you in the community had started to donate to getting us a new computer because the old computer has caused nothing but headaches and nobody was more tired of it than you, the listeners. So we really appreciate all your help raising that money, but we actually hit We've our target. It. We went and bought it. Adam picks up the new machine this afternoon. All barring all what knock on all the wood and hope yeah, that things go well. Should yeah. be ready for pickup this afternoon. So hopefully uh our next episode, which by the way, John Gibbons interview. Uh, yes. Thursday. Get your, get your questions in for John Gibbons now. Um should be on the new rig. So in terms of Will our sound be any better? Probably not. Will our visual aspect be any H or D? Probably not. But we, we should have just drop feeds and lose exactly <laughs> and lose connections. And... I mean, yes. it should be nice stuff. I mean, if we can start pulling up more stats more frequently and with better yes fluidity there, you'll um... be able to have more than one tab open at a time. Oh, It'll wouldn't be that amazing. be nice? Right? right. So lots of that sort of stuff might be able to pull in some some clips and some highlights that we can uh, share on the, the video side of things and stuff like that. And so, we owe this all to you folks. Like, honestly, it is mind blowing. I, I still like the gratitude I feel is through the roof here. So I hope everyone listening knows how much we appreciate all of you helping. It wasn't just Patreon, by the way. No, it was definitely just regular uh, listeners who also sent us money like just literally got on the the e-transfer train and just started sending us money and yeah, we really got appreciate countless it. Had dms on twitter and instagram just saying hey i don't do patreon but i'd like to support and contribute how can i do that super and, chats people were yeah anyway yeah. so uh, uh very generous of all of you we'll get into it here because we do got lots to get to welcome everybody to a monday morning mailbag on a tuesday afternoon i'm scott hey. belford Joined, as always, by the best co-host in the biz, Adam Mack. Hello, hello. And this is the walk-off. So before we get right into it, buddy, I did want to just bring up real quick. I didn't mention this to you, so you might not have seen this. But oh, good. Old, old friend of the show, now a Miami Marlin, Jordan Groshans called up to the big leagues today. Hey, nice. Going to make his major league debut. So all the best to Mr. Groshans. And uh, go get him. it, kid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I also wanted to bring up a really, it wasn't directed at us, but it was a very funny tweet from friend of the show, Spencer, who is infamous on Blue Jays Twitter as probably the top shit poster within the Blue Jays Twitter realm. And, and this was directed at Cooper Criswell, who of course was the soft tossing lefty that the Tampa Bay Rays called up. First, they grabbed him off the scrap heap. And now, of course, they turned him into a very effective <laughs> three-inning starting pitcher. But uh, Spencer's tweet went along the lines of, uh, sometimes you'll be working with someone older than you, and they just seem to know everything about the job. Then one day they disappear. But please don't worry about them. They are now pitching with the Tampa Bay Rays. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty They just fitting. have a way, that Rays yeah. organization. And, of course, the Blue Jays' one Achilles heel is a sloth topping left, uh, a, a soft What was that tossing, word? Soft tossing lefty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that the Tampa Bay Rays call up that they haven't seen before but managed to get the win yesterday in uh, dramatic fashion. But uh, we will... We'll get into all that. Uh, some news this morning. Manoa going to miss his start this morning. Yes. Stomach Belly rock. ache. Yeah. They're uh, hoping to push him to the late game. Uh, I know literal they're... bad taco situation. Yes. With the absolutely. upset tummy. So, so. so hopefully go. he pitches. If not, it's going to be an interesting two 
bullpen days on a double header. Uh, Yikes. Yes. Yeah. So Mitch Yikes. White, hopefully he performs because there may not be an option. They may just need to toss Mitch White out there for five innings, good or bad. So. Yep. We'll see which Mitch White shows up. All right. Uh, off to the mailbag now. Uh, yes, this sir. one comes in from Instagram this morning. Uh, reach out to us, by the way, on Instagram, Twitter, drop a comment in the Discord, wherever the case may be. This one comes in from Dylan on Instagram. says, Nate Pearson was on Blair and Barker this morning, and apparently his velo is just under 100 at the moment. So he's still eyeing a return, maybe help this team out in a bullpen relief capacity. Uh, in October. Anyways, he says, kudos to Scott and Adam for nailing the mono diagnosis as something that we should be worried about that could put the entire season in jeopardy for Nate. Here we are September 13th, and he's still not back. Well, that's an uncomfortable feel, kudos. Right? Yes. <laughs> Great job, guys, on calling. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, just like when he first got it in spring training that, you know, Everybody was like, well, yeah, that's like a six-week illness, you know? Yeah, he'll be but back like, by May. Yeah. But, like, that's Ugh. clearly people who have never had mono. And anyways, I hope we can help this team out. What do you think? Is is he uh, a bullpen piece in October? I mean, so to be available to the playoff roster, he would have had to have been on the 40-man roster September 1st. Now, can he help this team in the bullpen for the final two weeks of the season? I think it is possible. I would was, bet against it. He was not on the 40-man on September 1st? Is that what you're telling me? Well, maybe we need to look into that. I, I feel like he was placed on the 60-man IL, and uh, but we'd need to look into that. I don't know 100%. But I, I don't think so, man. I think right. that he... I'll look into that while we're, while we're doing another comment here in a bit. Okay. Um. So that's a great stumbling block to start with. Right out of the gates, look at us go. Yes. No technical difficulties needed. We have untechnical <laughs> difficulties ready at hand. So here we go. <laughs> we'll talk ourselves into a question we don't have the answer for. Good for us. <laughs> yeah, well done. All right. Uh, anyways, thanks for the uh, the message there, Dylan. Next one comes yes. in from Marcus G, who says... Uh, Great show, guys. Thanks for covering the Ross Stripling free agency, especially, which is probably a big off-season storyline. Something I'd love to hear discussed on this week's hashtag mailbag. Uh, the case for Manoa, Cy Young. What does he need to do with McClanahan and Verlander both being injured and Dylan Cease walking the world? If Manoa goes 3-0 and with a sub-2 ERA the rest of the way and Verlander doesn't pitch again this regular season... Could the Jays see back-to-back -back Cy Young wins? Marcus G. Great comment, by the way. He's, of course, an old savvy vet of the show, so it's nice to see him still out there manipulating the algorithm with his comments. Uh, a few things to touch on. Number one, boy, did he ever nail it with Dylan Cease. It is mind-blowing to me how much Cease walks hitters and yet still how dominant he can be like his walk rate is through the roof and yet he still manages to kind of pitch himself out of most trouble that he gets into but it is a good it is a very good point cease has kind of eliminated himself from any Cy Young talk because of how much he walks now when you're talking McClanahan he is supposedly going to be back with the Tampa Bay Rays within the week that is what the Rays are hoping for. There's even rumors that he could wind up pitching in that game five against the Jays here on Thursday. We'll wait and see how that, I mean, injuries are always kind of a sliding scale. Justin Verlander, same thing. There's a lot of hope that he's back before the end of the season. Do I, my gut reaction to this is there's nothing that Manoa can do over the next three starts. To win the Cy Young Award. You think it's Verlander's, think, right? He's got it wrapped I think, up. I, I think it's Verlander, and I think he's got it wrapped up. And I don't even think it's necessary. <clears throat> if this was Justin Verlander's numbers at 32 years old, it might be different, which is totally unfair. But sometimes that's just the way baseball voters go. You know, like this is, there is going to be some emotional pull by some of these baseball writers who are placing their vote. 
and there may be a little bit of bias. Listen, this is a 40-year-old man who has just come back from Tommy John surgery. And if you look at the history of pitchers coming back from Tommy John, that first season, look at Noah Syndergaard. That first season back is always a struggle. Not that Syndergaard didn't do do admirably, right? But he was he was a, a mid rotation pitcher this season. And we all know what Thor can do when he's at his absolute best. So there is another level there. Verlander came back and he just was unbelievable. Great storyline for Verlander. I'll give you that. Uh, I I see your 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 emotional votes for Verlander, and I will raise you a hatred for the Astros. Yes. Maybe balances that out. Maybe it does. We'll see. Verlander's do you think got Manoa. Do you think if Manoa pitches out of his mind these last three starts, that there's a chance of him? How many I stolen think he's bases going to get does he have? Votes. How many stolen bases? Yeah. <laughs> Call back to Sunday. Um, all right. So let's just play this out as if Verlander is only returns in time for the playoffs. Right? The Astros have their division locked up. They have a probably home field advantage throughout the playoffs locked up. They don't need Verlander back. They don't need to rush him back. So let's just say for the 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 sake of this argument in baseball. Yes. um, Hold on. Hello. Yeah, this is him. Sounds good. I'll be in today to pick it up. Okay, thank you. My computer is we ready for pickup. Hey, we did it. There we go. The, pin, we, the computer, ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not one to answer phone calls, but uh, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. So that's great entertainment. I'm sure of it. Okay. <laughs> we'll just edit all that out. Uh, nah, on the new co- that was great. <laughs> you could actually hear what he said. It was perfect. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, so there you go. Thank you again to everybody for uh, contributing and helping us uh, reach that goal. Okay, Justin Verlander, let's just say he doesn't come back uh, for the rest of the year. He's at 152 innings pitched. Mm -hmm. Innings pitched is like a big thing. It's a big deal. It's a big thing. If Alec Manoa, and again, let's just, we're really saying like best case scenario for Alec Manoa to make a run at the Cy Young. If he pitches three more times, if he can get to 190 innings, that's a big deal. 40 extra innings? That's true. That is a massive statistical lead in a very important category. I mean, we watched what Bouchette can do in a small sample size, and it's very true. If Alec Manoa comes out over the next three starts, pitches seven innings plus, on top of that allows, let's say, three earned runs over those 21 extra innings lowers his ERA even further continues to show that he doesn't walk or give up hits improve that whip maybe there's a shot maybe there's a a Cy Young I think he's a Cy Young contender right now personally look I I think I do think he gets votes I do not think he wins yes uh Dylan Cease by the way yes a lot of walks so if we're looking at the Top four guys. We're looking at Verlander, Cease, McClanahan, and Manoa. He definitely has the most walks. He has 66 walks. But guess what? He also has far and away the most strikeouts. Mm -hmm. 206 strikeouts is a lot. Yeah, he's got 50 strikeouts more than Verlander and 50 strikeouts more than Manoa. That's substantial. Like, What's his innings at? He's at 162. So we got Verlander at 152. McClanahan at 147, Cease is at 162, and Manoa at 171. Yeah, right. This is going to be tight. Honestly, if this wasn't... If this wasn't so tight, I feel like markets are going to play into this. Yeah. And as soon as Toronto is involved in, in America's pastime, they can get snubbed more often than not. I... I would also say the fact that Robbie Ray won it last year is a factor that acts against Alec Manoa. It gives them a be like, well, Toronto did just get it last year. 
you know, it's dumb. Probably going to be Verlander. I, but I don't know. I, I would say Dylan Cease has a real case with 206 strikeouts. Honestly, man, even if Manoa doesn't win it, what a freaking season. Like 190 oh, yeah. innings pitched. Are you kidding me? Beauty. Coming up in your sophomore season, your first right. full major league season, struggling right. a little bit out of the all-star break just to find it again. Like, man. Not wow. bad at all. Uh, anyways, thanks for the great question, Marcus. Appreciate it. Next one, we're going to go to Discord for. So SCTI posted in Discord an article by John Morosi. Yes. Now, this is about a 22-year-old phenom playing in the Nippon Professional Baseball League in Japan. In Japan, yes. The next Shohei Otani is this... Are we so, getting ahead of ourselves? Do you want to take it from here, Scott? I know you're yeah, more familiar so with it. So this this article, and it great, great job by SCTI posting this because this is something I would have missed, which is what our Discord is this actually This is the really benefit of Discord, for. yeah. Some real cool yes, stuff that gets picked up. It's 200 mega baseball nerds who are constantly feeding more information into the machine that is uh, us baseball nerds who consume so much. So... <laughs> Uh, this article blew me away. I hadn't even heard of this kid. His name is Munitaka Murakami. Wow. Okay? Well and done on that pronunciation, by the way. Thank you. I, I even listened to how they say his name a ah, few times to try and get very it Very well right. done. But, and if it is wrong, <laughs> sorry, guys. Like, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> a, a for effort, for sure. 22 years old. So, back in the day, uh, Sadahira O. Oh, and a, a lot of you old baseball fans might remember, oh, he was like literally, he is to Japan what Michael Jordan is to America, okay. right? Like he is just, everybody knows who he is. He's an icon. Everyone looks up to him. He's uh, considered one of the best Japanese baseball players to ever pick up the bat. He currently holds the record of 55 home runs by a Japanese player in the Nippon Baseball League. So this would be like who the manager was based on in Mr. Baseball. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I'm with you. Now, this record was actually broken in 2013 by Vladimir Balanchin out of uh, Carousel. So okay. the Netherlands, right? Uh, he hit 60, but not a Japanese player. Two days ago, uh, Murakami... So this young 22-year-old tied O's 55. There's 17 games left, and every Japanese baseball newspaper is following this. This is the biggest no news in Japan currently right now. Wow. And again, the fact that he is in his second full-time season, and he's so young, and he's doing something that hasn't been done in baseball in Japan since the 60s, like... People are losing their mind. This is very, very cool. similar to the judge. I was just going to say he's the Aaron judge of all these home run records, man. This is right? so cool. This is, is so cool. so cool. And it was very cool the way Morosi presented it too because he's like bombs are being hit day and night, right? Because when these games on the West Coast are finishing, right, right, right. Japanese baseball is starting just up. Starting so up just starting up, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. So it's pretty darn cool. So all the best oh. to this kid. Uh, very cool story. Uh, Morosi has this posted on his Twitter, by the way. So that's pretty fresh of of this morning. So you can go ahead and check that out if that's an article you feel like watching or uh, reading. Very cool. Well, thank you to uh, SCTI for bringing yes. attention to that. Um, very easy to miss cool stories like that. So we've got so easy. we've got Aaron Judge going for. What's he even going for? Is he going for 62? Is he going for 60? Like, I don't really know what I think the milestone right now is even for 62. Turning. So 61 is Roger Maris's record. Right. Uh, for the American League, obviously Barry Bonds holds the MLB record, but it is tainted. Everybody knows the steroid era tainted that, and Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and, and Bonds all have more than Maris's 61. However, again, there's a big asterisk next to that. And hopefully Aaron Judge is clean. I mean, he seems to be so far, you know. I don't want to be that negative Nancy who constantly shines a, a I mean, bad light on him. Look, it, he is but... eight feet tall, so. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Probably clean. 
Yeah, he's probably you clean. Know? Um, so we got that record. We got the Albert Pujols chasing 700 Real. milestone, which yeah. insane, by the way. Um, and then we've got, and this one I'll, I'll jump to a comment we got from Twitter. Uh, so Blue and the Jays, great name, by the way, uh, DM'd us this morning on Twitter and said, Hey guys, glad you touched on Mike Trout on Long Toss. Uh, But he did it again last night. That's seven home runs in seven games. He's now one blast away from tying the the MLB record of eight straight games with a home run, set by Dale Long in 1956, Don Mattingly in 1987, and the kid, Ken Griffey Jr. in 1993. Do you boys think he'll do it? I'm going to say sure. I'm going to say yes. Go Mike I'm, Trout. Like, uh, why would I only, want to bet against Mike Trout? <laughs> yeah, the only, like, bet against Mike Trout I would ever bet against him on is, is he going to make the playoffs? <laughs> shy, shy of that, I will bet yeah, on the yes for Mike Trout every single time. So, there you go. It was kind of fun because uh, that was this morning and we were messaging back and forth a little. And, and this guy, uh, what was his handle again blue and the jays uh, yeah blue and the jays was so frustrated with how little attention mike trout is getting for this and i mean that's mike trout M's o- his mo that Man, is the... what he does he yeah. quietly is a superstar that nobody shines that light on uh, big time it's too yeah. bad but yeah big time all right uh next one we're going back to discord for uh forbesy jr Ah, Forbesy Jr., one of our most active members, I would say. So a shout out to yeah. Forbesy. Long time love for Forbesy. Uh, so today, uh, nitpick stats that don't matter but are still really impressive. And then uh, posted a pic of some stats for Boba Shat. What I, I love the way he framed this too because you know what it reminds me? me up a little bit was mm. Mr. Baseball when they go to cut him from of the course. Yankees and he's like, are you kidding me? I've hit more home runs in the ninth inning in August than any, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. any player. Right? I he's lead like, this club in ninth inning doubles in the month of May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second uh, Mr. Baseball reference of the day, by the way. That's a... Uh, yes. Very cool. But it is a very impressive little... Um, snippet of stats if you will so boba shet is one week away from entering the al mvp conversation basically is how it goes um what he's done in september is at, so boba shet has 24 hits this is by the numbers in september okay so last year and this year mm-hmm. boba shet has 24 hits 21 rbis 15 runs seven home runs and six doubles in the first 11 games of september uh this year since RBIs became an official stat in 1920, only one other player, Lou Gehrig, in June 1930, has reached all of those benchmarks over an 11-game span. Bo Bichette has better numbers in September than almost any baseball player currently playing the game. So between last year and everyone remembers Bo got hot in September last year as well. Does any of this really matter? Is this coincidence? Is he a big game player? I mean, that's just up for you to interpret i guess but without a doubt incredibly impressive i mean he right now is sitting at on the season 281 average he's got 159 hits which is second in baseball he's got 24 home runs 38 doubles 87 rbis 82 runs nine stolen bases and an ops of 804 Oof. so like honestly if he it's true like, he really could. I'm not saying he has any shot of winning the AL MVP. I'm obviously not talking Otani, and I'm not talking uh, Judge. They obviously are the one-two punch there. But could Bo Bichette get some votes, some third- and fourth-place votes? If he continues to do what he's doing for the next two weeks, yeah, I would say so. You know, like, if he ends the season hitting 290, has 30 home runs or something ridiculous, like... I've I haven't seen a player this hot. I can't remember. I can't remember the last time. I mean, it's impressive. Uh, what else can you really say? Um, you went down the list of stats. It's I would say really good timing. Uh, yeah, isn't it? Just one second here while I look up this thing. Um, He 
He okay. So here's a a fun fact. This is how well the Blue Jays are hitting right now. Uh, our two going into this season, if you were to have any playoff aspirations, you were going to say we need Bo and Vladdy to be thumping in September, right? Yes, sir. Well, Bo and Vladdy have a combined batting average of 350 through September. So, wow. Very cool. That'll do it. Now, Vladdy is only hitting 220 in September. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Bo's 500 has definitely helped things out here. Vladdy but they, is a little bit cold. We'll we'll take it, right? We'll take it. That's right. That's right. We'll take right. it. And, and listen, they've Vladdy combined for seven home done. runs in September. So all seven all of from them Bose. all yes. of them are bows. <laughs> yes. Very good. Uh, just to uh, revisit the Nate Pearson question from the okay. top of the show. Yes. According to MLB.com, postseason roster rules and eligibility. Uh, any player who is on the 40 man roster or. The 60-day injured list okay. as of 11:59 on August 31st is eligible for the postseason. So as such, Nate Pearson, yes, would in fact be eligible to help this team out in October. So Mr. there Mack, we go. Thank you so much for the on-the-spot research. I know we kind of uh, talked ourselves into a corner there, but way to... Way to get us out of this one, bud. We got there. Hey, we got there. Look at me. I got this new computer confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. But you know what? Old Faithful here. She's done a good job. She's done a good yes. job. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. We're saying that now as she's working for us. But <laughs> uh, Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, as it crashes right now when we lose this whole yeah. thing. All right. Um, so great comment there uh, in Discord there from Forbes. He appreciated it as always. Uh, next two that we're going to end on are from Patreon and they're both from Wyatt. So by the way, if you support us on Patreon, we have uh, 15 patrons at this point. Uh, thank you for all your support. If yes. you do have a question that you want to get answered on mailbag or you want to get a question in for one of our guests that's upcoming, like John Gibbons or whatever, uh, priority comments do go to the Patreon. So if it's a offensive, crude comment, like yeah. no guarantee, but we're going to get to yeah, it. We're not, but we're not guaranteeing anything, but yes. But uh, for sure, there is a little extra edge to uh, the Patreon for comments there. So Wyatt's got two good ones for today. Um, first one is basically, hey, fellas, question for Monday's mailbag. Uh, with how many injuries uh, the Blue Jays have had this year regarding... Uh, foul balls to the feet and hands and stuff like this during at bats. Um, do you think we'll see a time where the implement where the MLB will implement uh, like mandatory shin, foot, hand protectors, something like uh, the NHL has done with visors? I love this question. It is such an outside the box question, but great job, Wyatt. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think that. Um, I mean, to start with, let's just start with this. Yeah, we've seen more than our fair share of Blue Jays. I mean, Danny missed time because of getting hit on the hand. We saw a, a, numerous players miss some time because of deep br bone bruises and contusions. And luckily, no broken bones. I know we when I was in Pittsburgh... We were sitting behind the home plate area when Santiago Espinal got hit on the hand. And honestly, everyone around me was like, his hand's broken. There's no way his mm -hmm. hand's not broken. I thought the same thing. Like, he went down and got hit right on the – but he was wearing the armor. And if that was Danny Jansen, who prefers to go without batting gloves, or that's Matt Chapman, who doesn't like the big, heavy equipment, that's probably a broken bone, and that's, you know – two to six weeks on the IL, depending on how bad it is. I think players should be wearing this equipment to begin with, just on their own. I don't think it should need to be forced. I think that just it's the best thing you could do for your team. I'm not saying you're not a team player if you're not wearing it. I mean, when we had Danny Jansen on the show, we asked him about the batting gloves. That was uh, 
our, our good buddy, hey, Tommy Joel's question. He talked about the batting gloves. And Danny just has a better feel for the bat without the gloves on. It's the way he grew up. He just feels more comfortable that way. Matt Chapman, the same thing without the armor on his forearm. However, I feel like it might just be worth it to get used to these sort of things because have pitchers ever thrown faster? I mean, I know the old guys say no, but there's an argument to say that there's more guys throwing 100 miles an hour in baseball than there ever has been. I would be wearing equipment. Is baseball going to legislate it? I don't know. I think it is a possibility down the road. I know we watched hockey do it with helmets and then again with visors. Grandfather stuff in is probably the way they would do it if they are going to put these rules into place. Implementing something like this is going to have some pushback from the players. I mean, the players are always going to push back as soon as MLB puts in any rule. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Because yeah. there's just that animosity there. Yeah. Um, you, the owners could like mandate first class air travel. And the players would be like, but some of us are afraid to fly and want to be able yeah. to have the freedom to take the bus. Like, yes, this is baloney. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think for sure we see a, a time where it's legislated into baseball. I, I think owners do not like paying for guys to be on the IL and doing nothing. And I think that is enough reason to make that happen, you know? I mean, we've seen, we've seen Vladdy take a swing wing and foul it off his shin where the padding is vladdy hits almost everything 100 miles an hour off his bat like let's you know like there's a reason players are starting to wear this equipment in the places they are and it's because it saves them from going on the il it saves broken Look, bones it's, if i'm Kevin biggio no. i'm wearing the biggest bulkiest equipment i can find and, and i'm crowding the plate <laughs> Crowd that plate, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, let's clip that elbow pad. Um, yeah, no, I think for sure it's coming. It's just a matter of time. I mean, I think that at some point uh, we see pitchers wearing helmets, to be honest. Whether it's a face shield. I don't think it's like a full batting helmet, but some sort of a face cage and, yeah, you know, small, but, you know, off the back man, of the head, man. Like, that's, that's life threatening. Once a year. Once a year, we watch, yeah. whether it's minor league baseball or major league baseball, we watch someone take it in the head, and it yeah. is scary as all get out. So yeah. Even just from the happen. catcher throwing down to two and the pitcher's just ducking out of the way. Like, yeah. You know, that's still a 90-mile-an-hour throw down to two. Like, like, you know, hits you in the wrong spot. Anyways, yeah, player safety. We're, look, they legislated it in for base coaches have to wear helmets. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right. Last one here. Last one here. Um, in the event, the J. Okay. This is a long one. In the event, the J's. Okay. This, I'm just going to summarize this myself, but thank you for the comment, Wyatt. Um, so basically it comes down to playoff positioning, Scott. What is the ideal playoff spot? Assuming the Blue Jays. We don't win the ALE. Cannot yes. catch the Yankees. So are the basically are the Blue Jays better off with the second wild card or the third wild card? Would you rather go to Seattle or go to Cleveland? You know, again, this is a or would you rather host Seattle or Tampa Bay, I guess. I want home field advantage, yeah. and I don't wish to spend too much time worrying about who the opponent is because the truth is you're going to need to go through some really tough teams to get to where you want to be and if you can't beat Seattle in three days, let me tell you right now, you're not getting through the Dodgers in seven. Bottom line. So, or Houston or any yeah. of it. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Um, if, you, if your goal is to win the wild card, yeah, I want to play Minnesota. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. who are have basically eliminated themselves. I would rather play the White Sox. You know, if we're just going to play that game. But you know what my real goal for this team is? A World Series. So, if again, if you can't beat Seattle for three games, if you can't take care of business when the Rays come to town, you are not getting past the Astros. You are not getting into it with the Dodgers or the Braves. Like... I understand the idea of who would you rather and, you know, getting hot at the right time. But 
again, I just think it's irrelevant. Uh, you need to get out of this wild card di- series, no matter who you're facing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. This is also the beauty of September baseball. By the re- by the way, we are in the mid of a five game series with the Tampa Bay Rays. This is a perfect example of a series that we need to win three out of five. Like this is a yes. trial run for the playoffs. If we can't take three out of five versus Tampa in Toronto, you know, like this massive is... win last night, by the way, great pitching performance Big time. from the Blue Jays. Big and I, I'm not just talking Barrios. I'm talking right from start to finish incredible way to wrap things up by Bo Bichette. This Very team gutsy. did not did not say die right till the end. And this is the kind of performance we need to see out of this Toronto Blue Jays organization if we're going to watch them do anything in the playoffs. Thinking back to the 2015-2016 Toronto Blue Jays, the Edwin, Joey Bats, Josh Donaldson era. Bringer of rain. There were Russell some very Martin. iconic clips and highlights. Obviously, the bat flip. Um, yes. There's countless others. Watching Bo Bichette get brushed back and then slamming his bat onto the ground yeah. in like frustration gave me those vibes. Like That feels like the Canada Day Reds, no less, by the way. Yes. It was just like I got chills watching him like get brushed back and then just that throw last his, at bat, his bat yeah, down. That last oh. at bat from from start to finish was beautiful. Phenomenal. And then to 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 work the count to a full count and then to just do what he did. No, the kid time. is the most dialed in he's ever been, and this is what this Blue Jays team needs: is these kids Love dialed in to see it. Um, question about going to Seattle though. This is the tail end of this comment that I want to get to. Uh, as you and I can both attest to being West Coast guys, we've both been down to Seattle for Toronto series. Uh, Seattle would have home field advantage, but would Seattle be half full of Blue Jays fans from Vancouver, BC, Alberta? So a few things to unpack here. Number one, yes. <laughs> Obviously, there will be a pile of Canadian fans there. Now, is it going to be like we saw in July when I was lucky enough to go down and catch that series? When I say lucky enough, I mean it was great to be there, but the Jays got swept four in a row. Um, okay. Before you say what you're going to say, because I know where you're going with this, I do want to just touch on the fact that Seattle – as a fan base is used to the Canadian invasion when Toronto comes to town and a big reason that it's possible for Blue Jays fans to outnumber Seattle fans is not from lack of team support in Seattle, but it is like, ugh, I don't want to deal with what I know is going to be all these annoying Blue Jays fans. So they just don't pursue ticket sales the way they would for a, home playoff game that they haven't had in 100%. 20 years like Seattle is going to longest have... longest playoff drought in sports is the Seattle Mariners Seattle's going to have no problem selling tickets to residents of Washington 100% and I love the way you put that I know a friend of the show uh and fellow comedian Juan Forno is currently living in Seattle. Shout and out to Juan. He shout out to Juan. And he mentioned that to buy playoff tickets that are already on sale, by the way, for the Mariners. They're selling tickets very, very similar to all the markets are doing, uh, giving their season ticket holders priority. Mm-hmm. You need a Washington address to buy these tickets now obviously the mariners cannot enforce the secondary ticket market there's going to be plenty of tickets available at an astronomical price for canadians to buy and there will be a pile of rich vancouverites who make the trek down to seattle and represent this blue jays team is it going to be a 50 50 split absolutely not is it going to be 15 20 percent blue jays fans it will 
There will yeah. be a loud contingent of Blue Jays fans, but do not expect what we saw in July in Seattle. Do not expect what we just saw at the beginning of September in Pittsburgh. Great Obviously, point. these Mariner fans are starved for playoff performances. They haven't seen them in two decades, and they are going to be ravenous. So... It would be cool, don't get me wrong, but let's not let temper your expectations, Blue Jays fans, on what we'll see when it comes to home field advantage in Seattle. Yeah, I mean, if you can afford to live in Vancouver, you can afford black market scalped tickets in Seattle. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all we got for today, Scott. Perfect. Well, a I big thank you to everyone in the walk-off community. We really, really appreciate you. Again, the gratitude for what you folks have done over the last month to help us raise the funds to get a new computer is just mind-blowing. We're very excited about, especially as playoffs come up, ramping up the amount of live streaming we're doing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's going to give us capabilities we just didn't have before with this old rig. So uh, a, a big thank you to everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, who has been so... Um, interactive over the week we got a pile of messages and i know we probably touched on about five percent of what we actually got and our apologies if you feel snubbed not our intention at all keep those comments coming keep the questions coming in you can always get a hold of us on twitter we always answer our dms it's at walk off podcast on instagram the walk off podcast please feel free to join the discord all sorts of fun stuff going in totally there. totally free and for the discord by the way totally free for the discord the link is in the show notes Adam and I are doing a live walk-off watch party September 25th against the Rays. A big-time game. That's 11 a.m. Mountain Time in Calgary, just outside, actually. It's in Okotoks at Big Beaver Brewing. Tickets are available now. Please come out. Have some fun. We're going to do a live um, podcast after the game. And on top of that, we're giving almost all of our money that we're getting for uh there's going to be some silent auction stuff and tickets and stuff like that to the jay's care foundation so to a very good cause you found it you found the word found the word, uh, found the word cause <laughs> <laughs> i'm out the door in uh, about two minutes to go pick up the new computer um i'll just quickly say again a big thank you to everyone on patreon and everyone who's not on patreon who contributed five dollars ten dollars a hundred dollars we were really kind of blown away by all the support there so here's the big mushy thank you uh thank you for all that it's been kind of overwhelming um i'll run down the list of yes patreon you. supporters so patreon.com slash the walk off podcast one dollar a week gets us uh access to all of our bonus content there so david abraham michael sarah john simon rashid joshua jeremy ian dunedin bob john wyatt patrick and now joey Schatz. uh great pun on the name joey bats movie reviews scott and i are going to be doing battered bastards of baseball right away right away uh, early access to all of our interviews, unedited. Uh, John, John Gibbons, Gibbons Thursday, Thursday, which we'll be releasing next week. But to all you Patreon, you have it Thursday right afterwards. There you go. Uh, we do contests. We had a Jose Brios jersey that we gave away to. I don't have the name now. I think it was John got that one. And in coordination with Garth, uh, we did a card giveaway, and Ian got the cards. Um. I just want to say the last thing here about the computer and how that's going to impact the podcast. Uh, there is going to be obviously, hopefully, uh, an increase in frequency uh, of content starting next week. So my plan is to spend the rest of the week. My daughter's at her mom's. I'm going to spend the rest of the week getting familiar with it. Uh, hopefully figuring out how to uh, set up the sound levels properly. Let's be honest. Uh, doing a lot of testing to make sure that everything works properly. And then by Monday of next week, uh, we're going to hope to go five days a week with the show uh, every morning. The format may change a little bit. Uh, may go from full, we're doing like 50 to 60 minute episodes right now, twice a week. That mm -hmm. may change to like a one hour live stream every morning that then 
gets converted into clips and stuff for YouTube after the fact. So there is going to be kind of a, a shift in the way the format comes to you, but hopefully it's an improvement. Hopefully most of you think that it's a, an improvement. I know there's going to be some sticklers who are like, this is worse than it was before. We can't, can't please, please everyone. So in general, it should be more for everyone. I know we've had a lot of requests for like, hey, can you put chapters in your video notes, you know, for all the different topics? I think the plan is to break it up in a way where it'll just be separate videos. It'll be a full playlist every day where you can just watch all 10 videos mm -hmm. in a row, but it might be 10 five-minute videos or five 10-minute videos, and you'll be able to see... Okay, here's where they're talking about uh, Mike Trout on his eight-game home run streak. And here's where they're talking about Alec Manoa. And here's where they're talking about whatever the case may be. So hopefully it's just a benefit to everybody. Um, but we appreciate your patience as we work through the inevitable kinks that are coming up yes. and the shifting format. Uh, and that's my that's the end of my long-winded spiel. There you go. So. First show on the new rig will be tomorrow with Adam and Scott suck at betting. So join us then. Thanks again, everybody. All the best. Take care. Love this walk-off community so much. Go Blue Jays, go. Cheers.